So I'm doing a bit of macro photography today. I've stumbled across a wild European honey beehive. It's in the base of, a, I think it's a, an iron oak tree. Uh, it's a eucalyptus anyway. So it's been here for hundreds of years and I think this hive has been here probably just as long. It's in not the nicest of locations and it's in a car park with lots of foot traffic. As you can see behind me, there's two rancid bins, but it doesn't seem to disturb them too much, which is pretty cool. This is one of three hives in the area, but this is easy to get to because it's on the ground. Today I'm using my Nikon Z8 and I'm looking to do a bit of limitless burst shooting and uh, taking advantage of some super slow motion 4K. So this is the first time using it for macro photography. Let's hope it goes okay. So these are European honeybees. They're not native Australian honeybees, so I guess you could call them feral, as they have no master. These bees were first introduced in Australia in the early 1820s, and their population has just grown from there. They generally tolerate other native bees, but they do compete when they're a source of nectar. Even though these introduced bees are extremely important for pollinating, they do impact other native Australian mammals and birds since they tend to make hives in tree hollows, pushes out these other animals that would use it for a nest or breeding area. Hard to fight off a swarm of angry bees, whoever you are. Photographing these bees is kinda tricky. It's hard to predict where they'll land or take off, so there's a bit of guesswork here. But shutter button mashing solves a lot of the issues. See this bee here? So it's flapping its wings extremely fast. This is a bee doing a call to action. It's a signal to either help them out or to get others moving. The sun is starting to get a bit warmer now, so maybe this is a sign to get other bees to start moving out. It can also be a sign that a bee's lost and needs guidance back to the proper part of the hive, or it's an alarm. Either way, it's a sign of intelligence. So now that the sun has risen a bit more, it's getting a little bit warmer, and it seems to be waking these gals up. And it's probably getting a bit warmer in the hive too. One of the things I love about the Z8 is the limitless burst shooting. So much fun just to hold the shutter button down and go crazy. It's uh, not as fun to sort through all these images when editing though. I just love how clean the images are out of this camera. Just incredible. Okay, so this is an after action report of how I went with the Z8, shooting a bit of macro photography this morning. Look. It went as well as you'd expect. You know, no buffer, no slowdown, and no overheating. So in other words, a really great experience. I think this is gonna be my main macro photography camera going forward. It's lightweight, uh, it's easy to handle, plus it's got all those insane tech specs from the Z9, so I think it's just a match made in heaven for macro photography. So battery life is also good. I was out there for two hours, and I think one bar was taken off the battery display, which is, Pretty good. Now that's the battery that came with the camera. All the batteries may vary in how much you can sustain out there in the field. But this is, uh, as I said, it's a really great experience. Going to be my main macro camera going forward and I am excited to see what I can produce from it. Uh, who would have thought that uh, new technology can really get those creative juices going? So, not sure how to end this video, so I will just say, as usual, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers.